All right. Right after I create the image, I get a piece of paper that is treated with baby oil, and I use my brown uh, Crayola and transfer the image. Okay, so what I did is I started out with, uh, well, I'm adding more uh, features with the brown pencil so I can see where everything is. Eventually, I'm going to take out the, um, the paper from underneath. Now I'm using white because I want to keep my highlights. Uh, the highlights, um, it, it's easier to put in the light colors first and then go over it with the, um, the darker color. So, so you want to start from light to dark. So I'm just adding all the places where it's going to be, the, where the light is going to hit the hardest or where I know I'm going to have to blend and make it lighter. Whenever I need to add the, um, wherever I want it to hit it hardest, where I know the light is really hitting it, I really uh, add the white um, with a lot of pressure. Where I know it's going to be really light, I'm going to um, use the side of the pencil. Adding the highlights to the lips and just keep referring back to your source image to see where your highlights are, where your lightest colors are. With the paper treated with uh, with the uh, baby oil, it tend it tends to uh, tone the paper to a gray, so you can kind of see the the white. This paper, it looks like I let this one stay. I let it dry for about a, a day or so. If you think you're going to be doing a lot of heavy blending and whatnot, uh, keep a little cup of baby oil nearby, uh, especially if you let the paper sit for a day or so. If you're if you just treated it with baby oil, you've got about an hour or so, depending on what kind of fan you have it under, and then it'll pick up the pencil and it will blend. So when you uh, are uh, applying the white, just really uh, study your image, your source image, or just keep in mind where your light source is. The cheeks are, are um, going to be blended, so I'm hitting it with the side of the pencil. And so will the forehead the bridge of the nose and if you don't hit them all all your <clears throat> if you don't hit all of your spots uh, at first don't worry about it you can always come back and you can um, also mix your pencil in with it, with it again. There's a little bit of where the chin is. Um, I'm hitting the lips. Now 
with this kind of paper it's going to be transparent so you really want to cover your entire sheet with color even if it's just like a slight bit of color but again if, if you miss a few spots don't worry about it if you keep referring to your source image you'll you'll come back to that again If you're having a hard time seeing the white, I'm probably having a hard time seeing the white too. So I'm probably going back over some spots where I really have a hard time seeing it. And uh, when you use these pencils, you're going to be working somewhat in layers. Actually, you will be working in layers. Um, and you'll be blending. So you don't want to really push down on the paper. Um, with it treated with baby oil, you'll see some of the oil start to come up, which is not its not a bad thing, it's not going to hurt anything, but it may make it harder for you to add the next layer. These colors aren't heavily pigmented or super soft like um, Prismacolor. That looks like a... I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe it might be the peach. So I've got the brown, the light brown. And I'm going to uh, start adding the peach. In that part of the forehead, uh, it, it's peach. Well, when you work from source images, um, especially if you can't be in front of the computer, I print mine out. So at one one of my uh, source images like the computer looks more gold and then when i print it out it looks more um, well or vice versa it looks either orange and goldish so i just kind of went with uh an in between but um i believe the first source image that i had looked more of a goldish tone all throughout Now on this uh, part of the tutorial, I'm not going to be doing the hair. Uh, this is pretty much just focusing on the skin. And I'm going from my dark area to the light area, and I'm leaving my white exposed. And I'll be uh, adding a lot more color. The more colors you add, the easier it is to blend them all together. So what I do is I kind of give myself a bit of a base by adding... Um, a set of colors before I start using my blending stuff. So just keep an eye out on your source image, how dark one area is to another. Just keep comparing. Is this area darker than another? Is it going to be about the same tone as another area? That's why I look like I'm jumping around. I have a pencil in my hand and I, I spot something either I missed or something that I something that caught my eye that I think uh, is the same tone as another. Okay, I'm going to be adding the yellow. Yes, so I was using the screen. I got yellow and an orange. And uh, the picture is a little bit more orange to gold. Her shadows look like they're um, an orange... Uh, uh, let's see, like more like an orange or goldish color. So I'll be adding uh, the yellow. Now the yellow is pretty powerful on this. So I ended up having to do a lot of blending. If you do pick the wrong colors, don't worry about it. You can, um, one of the things that you can do is you can keep blending and go over it with the other color. If you still find that it's still the wrong color, you can go over it with a... Uh, with baby oil and you can pretty much rub it out uh, it'll it'll make it more faint it won't disappear completely but it will uh, it will be so faint that you can go right on over it 
This paper is uh, Bristol paper and it's pretty resilient when it comes to this. It, it changes the texture of the paper, it changes the makeup of the paper, uh, adding the baby oil directly to the paper. And you might find this is one of the better papers that you've ever used. Uh, just try it when you have uh, Crayolas or if you're using Prismacolors. It can't hurt. Um, Prismacolors just collide like um, they're amazing on this paper, especially with this technique. So now what I'm doing is I'm going over uh, some of the areas uh, where I'm going to be blending them together uh, with the white. I want them to be, I want them to be a gradient. So I'm merging the colors together, and don't be afraid to go back over colors. Um, that helps to blend them. This area right here that I'm focusing on, uh, she'll have hair over that part. That's where that shadow comes from. And I still haven't used my blending stub. I don't use the white so much to blend things in unless I'm making them lighter. Um, you can go lighter on some colors uh, to a certain extent. If you use the warm colors, you can brighten things up. And if you use the cooler colors, like the browns and the blues, you can really uh, darken. So that is how I compensate for uh, not having Prisma colors. And it works just fine. It's really pretty. So I'm going through with the peach. Because I noticed that the, uh, the yellow is really overpowering. And the, the pack that I'm using is 50 pack. So check the back of the box and it'll show you all the colors that come with the box. And you'll see um, how many tones each you can use for skin. And what's really funny is that these same pencils are the same ones I may use for uh, darker skin tones as well. And I'll do another tutorial on that as well. And when it comes to coloring, you'll be anxious to want to move forward. It's like you want to just get done with it, get there, get there, get there. And that's not a problem. Um, jump around if you need to, but just be warned that with the paper the way it is, uh, you may have some flakes from the colored pencil, and it picks up the pencil and it will blend. It's doing exactly right there. Um, I've had a lot of problems with that. Uh, bits and pieces of it coming off uh, not a lot but just enough that uh, because I jump around uh, I'll have different colors in different places that I didn't want them to be like outside the face um, when you have that kind of thing happen you want to be able to uh, either cover it up rub it out add baby oil rub it out if that doesn't work and sometimes it doesn't uh, you can try using a solvent um, and see if you can uh, blend that out too uh, to try to get rid of it. So be very careful when you're working with your dark colors because those are the ones that, that flake the most and are the most uh, annoying to deal with. So before I start adding eyebrows or eye colors or anything like that, I try to get uh, the lighter tones first. Once you start having a layer of uh, some layers of colors on on the uh, on onto it, you can probably rub those little flakes off. So now I'm working my way downwards towards the eye. Okay, I'm, I'm speeding it up just a little bit, and I'm using a blending stub. And I'm just blending those colors in. 
adding more dark around the edges. And I apologize for the time lapse. Um, my computer can't handle uh, hours upon hours of a uh, video. So now and then you'll see time lapse. But basically I'm just going over and over and uh, getting to the tones that I want. Okay, I'm starting to work my way down to the eyes and the cheeks. And you can start wherever you feel comfortable. Sometimes it's, it adds more interest by starting with the eyes. And with this technique, you want to work from your uh, lights to darks. Because it's, it's easier, like I said, to... Um, there we go. It's easier to uh, handle the lights, but once you go dark, it's hard to lighten that up. Not without a lot of effort. Okay, and I'm just doing the contouring of the cheeks, the jaw, with the peach. I'm just adding the peach. And I'm doing it very lightly. And just keep an eye on your source image. Where are your colors? Where Where is it darkest? Okay, now I'm, I'm being bold and brave and going for the eyes. Now, if you happen to go over your highlight, you can always add it back. Make sure that you wipe your white pencil. This is a really good tip uh, from Retreat Syndrome that you should wipe your... Uh, white pencil so it doesn't carry over to another area unless you want it to. Now I'm just cont contouring the eyes and she's wearing a lot of eye makeup. Um, so uh, that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of tutorials will show you um, how to draw the eyes in a certain way. I'm going to uh, but it's like it, it's hard to keep the proportions straight because uh, of the eye makeup. So just try to keep in mind uh, what, what you're doing and uh, keep an eye on your source image. We have used salmon, dark brown, and uh, doing the eyebrows. And I could have gone a little bit darker on the eyebrows. And you just look at um, how dark some parts of the of the face are versus others to, to gauge how dark you really need to go. And I noticed that salmon is a, a really good skin, uh, skin tone to bring out that it's like a deeper darker peach. You don't want to add the eyebrow, the eyelashes, until you're done pretty much with the uh, blending. You'll lose the sharpness if you start to blend out, uh, out on top of that. And if you do, you just add more uh, dark tones. Okay, I'm uh, blending in the whites with the uh, peach. The browns to define a little bit more. And just keep constantly referring to your source image before you put your pencil down. Sometimes it'll take two or three different types of pencils layering those on top of each other in order to get the tone that you need. Also, uh, pay attention to your highlights. Uh, sometimes your highlights aren't plain white. 
uh, sometimes they're a, sh a, 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 a hair shade of uh, your lightest color like uh, it may be a, a light peach the pack doesn't come with a very light peach so you have to wing it so don't be afraid to go over your highlights uh, lightly uh, in order to achieve the next the next tone that you need to get to uh, but again your your highlights aren't always white back at home <laughs> and I'm adding more of the orange tone to uh, that shadow I was talking about and off to the far left you can see the source image that I have propped up that I'm looking at Okay, you got to be very careful with the nose. You don't want it to come out looking like a pig snout. So you want to go ahead and uh, gently add the tones and pay attention to what's darker, what's lighter, um, where your light is hitting it uh, in the source image. And another thing that's cool is that you don't have to use the same exact colors as the source image. Uh, these oranges could be easily substituted with like blue or green. And uh, if you, as long as you assign one tone to each uh, each contour and whatnot, um, you can get a really interesting effect. Sometimes in order to get the right proportions on your face, <clears throat> sometimes you'll have to draw uh, landmarks around it. Um, like say, I uh, off to the side on the left, uh, where I'm drawing the shadow, you can see the hint of where the hair is uh, on that side. Um, I use that as a guide, um, so don't be afraid to throw in some guides as well. Um, I use the eyes as a, a measurement. Um, at this point, I'm pretty much just going ahead and just uh, doing some fine tuning. Just making sure I'm getting to the tone that I want to be in. Now you are limited in your colors. Uh, you have a, a, a vast variety. You have a, a good variety with Prisma colors, but um, in some of the other um, higher end pencils. Uh, and you don't have to do as much work with some of them. I mean, you can go right on in with like a light peach and a uh, peach tone, but since you, you're limited, um, it's, it's good practice to learn uh, which colors look good together. So it doesn't hurt to take um, a treated piece of paper, uh, like a little scratch uh, Bristol paper with some oil on it, and uh, 
mix some colors in to see uh, what combinations will do what for you. Now again with blending, if you're finding that uh, your pencils aren't blending like you want them to, like they're not, um, the colors aren't really uh, moving enough, you could still see scratchy lines and whatnot. If you can see all that, you can use, um, you can dip your blending stub in the baby oil. If you um, want to uh, cover a little bit more area, you can use a or if you're concerned that it's taking up too much oil, uh, the blending sub, you can go ahead and use a paintbrush and you can blend with that as well. Um, and if you feel like that's still not giving you enough, um, I would recommend using, uh, in moderation, the uh, Mona Lisa, um, what is that called? The, the Mona Lisa solvent paint thinner. Um, you would dip that with a paintbrush or your blending stub. A uh, paintbrush will uh, allow more of the thinner onto the paper. The only downside to it is that once it dries, you start to see uh, white, the white of the paper come through. So I don't always recommend using um, uh, the thinner, but if, you, if you're desperate and you got to move those colors around, definitely uh, go for the thinner. But first, go for the baby oil. It's less toxic than the thinner. On this one, I barely used um, I barely used any baby oil. I don't think I used much at all um, since the paper was still it still had its uh, uh, it still had the baby oil uh, onto it, and um, it still allowed the pencil smooth. Um, in the middle of your drawing, if you ever come across where it's still not doing what you want it to do and you've already got pencil on it, flip it over and add the baby oil to the back of the picture. That way you don't lose um, your images. Um, I had made the mistake of adding the baby oil to the front of the picture and I smeared the crap out of it. Um, it was the um, Ahura one that I was doing and uh, the red was so was on there so thickly that when I put baby oil over it it just moved <laughs> and uh, everything became pink a shade of pink it was an interesting effect but it's not the effect that I wanted so after I wiped some of it off and let it dry for a few days um, I came back to it and uh, I was able to cover over it so in it, it turned out pretty good alrighty um, one of my dilemmas that I had on here was the lips uh, the, there wasn't a color that matched her lips perfectly um, so I had to play with a few other colors um, and here I thought I should add more gold to her but not a lot but that was more of a, a harvest gold type color not too bright not too dull now this is a good technique if you don't want to have graphite all over the place um, if you don't want uh, if you want to even do multiple pictures so like if I ever made a mistake on this one, I could uh, reuse my uh, pencil drawing and just put it on or put it over or rather under the picture that uh, the paper that I'm working on. You can draw on the the paper first and then you know uh, cover it with baby oil and then let it dry for an hour or a few hours and. Uh, the graphite won't uh, the graphite won't rub off. Unfortunately, it's harder to cover as well. 
and uh, you'll see that when I do one of my darker tones. Um, I'll be working on a uh, Pam Greer picture and instead of doing the pencils on a different piece of paper and tracing, I drew onto the paper and uh, it didn't turn out too well. Well, it, it's not too bad. I'm still in the process of working on it. Um, if you feel that your your things aren't looking right, it's just not there, um, put it away for a little bit and then come back to it later. Um, I've found uh, that doing that, I might get I might look at the picture with fresh eyes and um, find that it might still be salvageable. Okay, so now I'm working on the shadows beneath uh, on the neck. And your shadows uh, beneath her, her jawline will make her head really just pop out a little bit more. Look three, more three-dimensional. Uh, before you start reaching for black, um, try using your uh, your complementary colors. Those are like the opposite on the color wheel. Um, and uh, on this one, I'm pretty much focusing on uh, the browns, using browns on these. Oh, and also keep in mind you cannot erase. So if you're one of those type of people who uh, like to put colors down and then try to give it a highlight um, by erasing, you can't do it. it it's it, it's damn near impossible. I've even tried using um, an electric pencil sharpener, and it's just a big mess. You'll leave uh, splotches and it's just messy. So. Definitely be uh, strategic in where you put your colors. And all I'm doing is is blending the whites in, um, moving uh, moving tones around um, to contour the face. Um, when I uh, blend the colors together. I am going in little circles. It looks like I'm just going back and forth, but I'm actually going in little circles. And be careful how you uh, blend because uh, it will move. <laughs> and sometimes it'll move in places where you didn't want it to be. And if that happens, you can darken their uh, areas and uh, lighten others with the uh, with another lighter color pencil, and just try to blend it in.
Well, on this base, um, I didn't use any, what's the word, uh, I didn't use any outlines, um, any hard outlines. I used the, I let the tones become the outlines. You can barely see any of the brown pencil that I had on initially. When you transfer your image onto the paper, um, you want to focus in on um, where it's dark, where you know you're going to have your dark lines. You don't want to put a line all around everything, uh, but you want to give yourself enough uh, clues on where things are so you don't make it harder on yourself when you remove the under image. Because you won't be uh, drawing the entire time with the color, with the, with the lined image beneath it. If you choose to use um, lined paper. Lined paper helps you stay uh, symmetrical. Especially when, you, when you, you can't really, you know, tell if one eye is a little higher than the other. The lines will help you out with that. So there's some some good points and bad points uh, to using the lined paper. It, they work. It works pretty well for faces that are straight on or at a you know at a three quarters view, but not so much when the face is really tilted. Well, maybe it might. It might. We'll see. We'll try a few more. Now I'm focusing on her jaw. Um, with the jaw, uh, there's usually a uh, cast shadow um, or a cast highlight uh, around the, the jaw. It'll be like dark and then um, it'll be lighter above, above, the, uh, above the shadow. And I tried to keep that on this. It's not always easy to see. But um, as you make one part darker, um, you'll you'll see like there's a bit of a highlight-looking type of thing that's above the above the uh, the shadow of the jaw, and uh, that's another way to uh, make your uh, images look three-dimensional. Is just having that highlight around the edge there. And her shadows are definitely not like hard dark color, hard dark uh, shadows. They are more of an orangish, uh, brownish tone. Okay. Somehow I missed um, the lips. Uh, so it looks like it jumped to a different uh, frame. Let's see. This one here is one, two, three. Yeah, it looks like I might have. Let's see. Yeah, I apologize about the lips. Um, it looks like I might have done some of that off camera. But um, when you add your highlights, um, and you apply them really dark and hard, uh, they don't, uh, you can go over them and they won't, uh, fade away. So you can go over them with another color like this mauve that I used for her lips and, uh, it, it's still there. And I've gone back over the highlights again just in case, um, they started uh, to rub off.
So basically I'm just trying to um, get to as close to that color on her lips as possible. It's more of like um, flesh covered with mauve like that. that and um, around her lips, um, usually there's a white highlight. I added that earlier, but I might have gone over it a little bit with the, uh, the pencil. I'm just adding peach around her lips. Just pay attention to the little details. Alrighty, so now I'm uh, doing more contouring. Uh, you'll see uh, as you look at your image, um, your source image, things that you might not have seen before. Um, I I see that. Uh, it's not quite white right there in that particular area so I'm going over some of my highlights and I'll just keep referring back and forth to my my source image Now don't beat yourself up if things aren't quite symmetrical. Um, the human face isn't perfectly symmetrical. Even with uh, some of the things that you'll see with some pictures, uh, one eye may be a little bit lazier than another one. Um, her lips in particular, um, they aren't symmetrical. Um, one side is uh, a little bit lower than the other um, in her uh, photograph. So. Um, uh, try to capture um, the quirks and uh, you may see them as like glaringly obvious but someone else who hasn't been staring at the same picture for hours may not see what you see so don't beat yourself up if you haven't uh, gotten everything perfectly straight because the human face is not perfect there are a lot of imperfections even the most symmetrical face has some sort of thing to it, so not to justify bad drawing, but uh, you can't you you can't be absolutely perfect all the time. Plus, it also the the the, uh, the lack of symmetry and faces gives it character, it makes uh, more people look. Um, you know, just like human. We're inhuman at whatever you're trying to <laughs> accomplish. Now, the longer that you spend on your picture, um, the more details you may be able to add to it. A good place to stop is when you think that you're, if you add one more thing to it, it's going to mess it up. But by all means, uh, colored pencils is not something that you want to just try to rush. Uh, even if you're doing a, <laughs> a tutorial that's extending into uh, an hour to almost two hour range, you know, you, you don't want to rush yourself. You don't want to miss anything. Um, you don't want to miss that contour, that opportunity to, uh, to blend and, and finesse, add some finesse to it. If some of the pictures that you've seen uh, look like someone spent hours on it, they probably have. 
and uh, they took that extra moment to add a little something something to it uh, whether it's another highlight whether it's uh, blending a little bit more um, they didn't just stop so take take your time when you do your uh, your picture and if you need to uh, take a day come back to it add some more things to it like I think um, I'm going to add more things uh, to this to the face um, as I'm doing uh, the hair uh, when I get to that part um, the hair won't be done in this um, tutorial um, like I said this one's just fit focusing on the face I'm probably just taking a moment to uh, take a look. Alrighty, and I'm just focusing on more detail around uh, the nose and the mouth. When it comes to uh, adding detail around the nostrils, just add enough uh, so that it defines the nostril. Uh, you don't want to go cross over into the pig stage where it looks like a, a pig snout. And for the lips, you don't want to heavily outline them. Uh, you want to uh, use your tones, um, uh, study the uh, the colors that are around the lips. Uh, lips are toned. Uh, you don't want to, just like the nose, you don't want to put hard lines around it unless uh, there are some shadows in there. Uh, I do gentle uh, colorings around the, the lips as per the uh, what the image requires but you really don't want to do like a hard black line around it. So the darkest parts on the lips, the upper lip is going to be a little darker than the lower lip. So always keep that in mind. Sorry about the cord uh, right there. That was my headphones. I was listening to something and I was thinking it wouldn't get into the picture. But it, it looks like it's dancing a little bit there. Also, uh, look at your source image and make sure that um, the lip is the correct thickness. Uh, some people have really thin lips, some have the little uh, cupid's bow, some uh, barely have a cupid's bow, and some of them have it painted in uh, the lips um, to give it more shape. It, that's a little bit outside their natural mouth. That's another thing to keep an eye out for, um, is the makeup can throw your picture off just a smidge. So you just gotta uh, just keep your eye on it. When picking out colors um, on your face, uh, you want to study your image. You want to look for your lightest tones, your darkest tones, um, and uh, the in-between. Um, when you're picking out your colors, um, does this color actually look brown? Does this color actually look orange? Um, is it more peach tone? Is it more mauve? You'll find that with skin tones, it's not a hard, fast rule that certain colors are certain things. Uh, you'll find um, under colors um, in some of the pictures. Like this one in particular, um, gold or yellow was more of like the uh, the undertone of this picture. Um, I chose to make it more of an orange um, with the printout 
but on the screen, if I would have kept using the screen as my source image, uh, or sole source, Im source image, um, she would have came out a little bit more yellow. Uh, whatever filters that they use when they took the picture is what you have. Now, you being the artist, you can determine how, whatever tone that you want. She could have uh, easily had uh, more muted, uh, darker tones to her face. Or you could go lighter, depending on how you apply your colors. With her lips, I didn't have the exact color, so I had to improvise. Um, I noticed that it's a combination of the salmon and um, a combination of mauve, uh, pink. Her lips weren't exactly pink and they weren't exactly purple. Um, so I'm using um, the salmon mixed with um, peach, I believe. And uh, I am trying to keep my uh, highlights uh, from getting too muddy. So I'm being very selective and very light on how I apply the color. But I still have to keep in mind that the upper lip is going to be darker than the lower lip. You know, just because of the way the, the light hits it. So when you have highlights in there that you've applied earlier, you just want to go over them lightly. They may not be perfectly white, but if they are, you can always go back over it. I'm just using the blending stub to blend the colors in. Also, uh, be careful with your blending stubs when you're uh, doing light colored faces or faces in general. Um, the stub itself picks up color and you can also move color around. So there will be times when I'll work in a dark area and then I'll take that blending stub and move it to another dark area. Something that I wanted to have uh, that dark tone to it. But you got to be very careful not to go back to your light area because you might mess up your, uh, your lightest areas. Now I'm going into my highlight and it doesn't disappear but it does take on a little bit of the hue of uh, what's around it so it's more of a gradient softer color. Now I'm defining the chin a little bit more. And again, she doesn't have any really hardcore darkness underneath her um, her lips or anything like that. None of her shadows are deep dark brown. They're all like this orange tone. This um, salmon colored tone
and on this paper you don't have to push super hard um, you can lightly uh, blend your colors with um, the blending stub uh, the paper is uh, slick for the paper pencils um, if you want to get uh, get it really slick um, when you when you do your coloring uh, use the paper when it's only been wet for about or drying for about an hour or so um, it picks up the pencil still uh, you can't press really hard on it because uh, it, it won't for some reason it just keeps it won't stay like it should um, but if you work your colors in lightly um, as it dries and you want to layer on top of it you can you can uh, blend really well it's just really super smooth And again, blend in, in circular motion. And that's that salmon cover. It gives a, a pretty uh, pinkish, rosyish glow to the, the skin. Okay, and now I'm going to be crossing over into more of my uh, highlights because her skin is not perfectly white in certain areas. And I'm, I'm using like a light brown underneath her chin. And, and you'll find that some colors work really great together. Um, the light brown and the peach gives me that um, pretty tone right there. Uh, a light, um, a light orange or the dark or well, the orange in general with the brown looks pretty good as well. And I've used multiple layers.
Now when you do apply a dark color, uh, you don't want it to overpower too much. So you want to apply it really lightly. You want to move back on your pencil and you want to uh, be very, very light with it. And if it, if it looks like it's a little too dark, just go ahead and go over it with um, another color, a lighter color. And um, you can blend those together and uh, it'll become more of a, a more cohesive color. The dark color um, defines the jaw a lot better uh, than just, and you want to have a good contrast between the head and the jaw to make the head really pop out. Especially when you're not using outlines. And you have no hair to frame the face. And um, at this point, you should take the opportunity to look to see if your your jaw shadow is similar to any of the other shadows. So is it is it lighter than your lightest shadow? Um, is it darker? That's fine. You know, it just want to see the relationship between things. That way, you can keep that um, not only a cohesive color but also that um, one's not overpowering another and, it, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. So the, the jaw, the, ch the, the shadow beneath the, the, the chin is darker than the top of the forehead and whatnot. As it should, as it should be. Occasionally, you may see the opposite, that someone's neck is light light, or as lighter as the face. It just depends on how uh, light is hitting them. Okay, I don't do too much more breakthrough-ish type things on this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, up the con the, uh, the speed so that you can see uh, where we are on this Okay, and now what I'm basically doing is, um, now that I've sped it up a little bit, it's just adding more to the contours. That side of her face is much darker than the other. So I, I'm giving a lot more detail. And I'm going into my, um, my highlights. Alrighty, and I determined that her mouth is uh, much smaller uh, than it needed to be, so I, I plumped up her lips a little bit more, did more detail among the teeth. Emphasize the shadow beneath uh, the, the top lip. I'm just using like the peach tone to soften it up a little bit. 
I'm defining around the outside of the mouth. And giving some more tones to the upper lip and around her chin. And then I'm just adding some um, some of the salmon uh, to uh, give it more of a a pink tone uh, to her her skin. And just coloring in the teeth a little bit, redefining uh, as I had adjusted the mouth a little bit. Sometimes it just takes a little bit more uh, detail uh, in order to uh, just do a little bit something else more to it, uh, just to give it a little bit more life, a little bit more. Uh, you know, a little bit more depth. Teeth are still white, but I wanted to give it more of a, it's behind the lips. Now we're coming up to the home stretch. Um, at this point, um, I'm almost done with the picture, at least as far as the skin tone goes. Uh, I'll need to add the ears, um, but mostly I believe the hair is going to be covering the ears. So we'll just uh, emphasizing the corners of the mouth. And again, her mouth is not symmetrical. Uh, one part is um, right there, and then the other part is a little bit in shadow. Um, makeup plays a part with that to uh, make it look more symmetrical. Alrighty, uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope that this helps you with your drawings in the future. And uh, don't be afraid to uh, try different things with your Crayolas. I'd love to see what you come up with if uh, my pictures have helped you. Um, uh, drop me a link in uh, the description, I mean um, in the comment fields below. Uh, and let me know what you think. Um, if you'd like to see something else as far as um, uh, what you'd like to see with Crayolas, maybe uh, suggest a portrait of a certain person, um, that's cool. Um, I'll take that into consideration you know, depending on what my workload looks like. And um, again, I, I really appreciate your patience in watching my video. Um, the next video I do for this particular picture, I'll be working on the hair. Um, and also, uh, I'll be, before I probably finish the hair one, I'll probably do a dark skin tutorial. So again, thank you for watching. Um, like and subscribe so you can catch the others. Alrighty. And, uh, thank you. Thanks again for watching. Those are the colors that I used. And, uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment field below.